Hi nieces and nephews, welcome back to Auntie Nell's Kitchen. And to my new nieces and nephews, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the family. Today, Auntie is going to be making, or shall I say, we are going to be making lasagna spaghetti squash. Yes, instead of pasta, we're going to be using the vegetable spaghetti squash. I'm also going to be making, you know, using my, uh, my homemade uh, meat sauce, okay? So we're going to do a flip and a squip. Put up and swip, and we're gonna get started. So you two can make this at home for your friends and your family, or like Auntie says, keep it to yourself. Okay. So give me a moment, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna first we're gonna take we have you're gonna have a spaghetti squash. This was put together like that. You're gonna cut it in half, but before you do any of that, you need to wash this off. You know, wash it off with some baking soda, a little vinegar. You gotta get all that uh, germs off. Okay, and I'm going to take this. I already have the oven, already close your oven and have it preheated, preheated to uh, at 375. You're going to scrape this these seeds out. You can use your hand or you can use a spoon. You're going to scrape scrape the seeds out first. You throw that on there, cause that's going to be a little housekeeping. That's what this is going to turn into, a little housekeeping for this. Scrape the seeds out. You can use your hand because you're not going to be using this, okay? You're not going to be using these seeds. No, I don't think you can eat these. I don't think you can eat these. <laughs> I've never tried. I've never, ever tried. Okay, got the seeds out of that. Okay. Auntie glass glasses sliding down. This side has more seeds than the other side. Make sure your hands are washed, okay? Don't come in that tea's kitchen with dirty hands. Because you're going to have to use your hands probably too. Because sometimes the spoon don't work. And that's why I say you have to make sure your squash is clean. As well as your hand. Because you're going to have to get on in there with these finger forks. Sometimes the seeds a little hard to get off and you're gonna need that spoon to scrape some of them off. Yep, so get that out of there. See that why you have to have stuff to the side. Get on off of my hand, come on now. Stop being difficult. That just irritates me when something won't come off my finger. Okay. Now, put this over here. I love these disposable cutting boards. Get that off of there. Mm. Toss this. A little housekeeping. Okay, now I'm going to bring this over here. And what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to spray my pan with a little cooking spray so my uh, spaghetti squash doesn't stick. And I'm going to put this in here for about an hour. Place it face down. And you're going to let this bake for about an hour, okay? Let me get this in the oven. Okay, now while, we wait, while that is being baked, our uh, spaghetti squash... We're going to start on our ricotta, ricotta, don't judge me, mix. Now, you know, lasagna, I don't care what you, lasagna is not lasagna, it's not Italian lasagna without ricotta bits, without ricotta, 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 tomato, tomato, potato, potato, you know, however you pronounce it, okay? I'm just those southern country girl, okay, so um, I'm going to start up, this is two, 15 ounce um, rumbles and stump rum, rum, rumbles rumbles and stumbles guys okay now you can use a 32 ounce 32 ounce of whole milk ric ric ricotta cheese 
or um, use two 15 ounces. They didn't. They were out of 32. And you don't have to buy uh, that real high end ricotta. Uh, so um, I saw it off. This is an eight ounce thing of mozzarella, mozzarella. So I like my I like my lasagna cheesy. So I just added half of this. I think that came out. And I add some half of the pack of my Parmesan. I don't have any fresh Parmesan, okay? Then I'm going to add two eggs, two large eggs. Put that in there. Throw that over there with a little housekeeping. And I'm going to add some fresh black pepper. Add a little salt. I'm using some fresh uh, sea salt. To your taste, of course, my my nieces and nephews. And you want to mix this really, really well. You want to make sure you get that egg well blended. Now you don't. You have to make sure. And I did. I did my ricotta mix also on a previous upload. So you don't. You want to know how to make this again? You don't have to watch this video. You could just go and watch that one because uh, I'm not going to need all this, and that's why I freeze it in my handy dandy freezer bags. I'm not going to need all this. So this freezes very well because um, I'm going to use some of this for another dish. So you want you want to make sure this is mixed in. You want to make sure those eggs are mixed in really well and what i have i have i have some um you you can add a little oregano and basil in here if you choose to and i think i will have a sprinkle of oregano and basil in here just a tad bit give it a little more flavor you can add some parsley in here if you want to to give it a little cuteness but parsley is not going to add any flavor to it okay so that's just my opinion. So I'm going to make sure I don't have any streaks of unmixed egg because you don't want that. Know what I said? If it's on the side of the ball, it ain't what it ain't mixing. Okay. This is no tasty, tasty. I don't deal with raw eggs. I don't consume raw eggs. Little housekeeping. I'm going to cover this and put it in the fridge because I need this to stay cold. Okay? I'll be right back. Okay, we are going to start on our meat sauce. I have two pounds of ground turkey. If I wasn't eating this, I would probably use ground beef, but because I'm eating this, I'm using ground turkey. Now, you know, ground turkey gives very little oil off, so I'm going to just get a little bit of oil in here. And I have one half, one half cup of bell peppers, one half cup of diced onion. Both of these are diced. And I have one tablespoon of garlic, and I'm going to get all of that in there. Mmm. You'll know because you're going to start smelling that flavor for garlic. It's going to start coming through. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add my meat. Throw that over there, little housekeeping. I'm going to go ahead and add my oregano and basil. And that's, that's a tablespoon of oregano, oregano, a tablespoon of baked basil. And where is my little apparatus? Okay, I'm going to chop this up. And all that goodness is going to come flowing through. And I will see you guys in a bit once I get all my meat. And I always cook my peppers and onions, onions. I always cook all of that together with my meat. And my herbs and spices because I think it just it, it evolves better to me, you know. So I'll see you guys in a bit. 
Now, normally I add some of my uh, Italian chicken sausage, but you know, if you want my uh, authentic uh, meat sauce, it's under my playlist, European playlist, with my authentic Italian uh, pasta sauce, meat sauce is listed under there, but I didn't take any out last night, so, but this is still going to be flavorful, it just doesn't have the uh, sausage in it. But you can always you can add that. I think when you use the Italian sausage in it, gives it more flavor, in my opinion. Because I always, but hey, move on with the flow today. Okay, I have the uh, meat all cooked, and it's not much um, fat in here, so I'm not. I don't have to do anything to that. I'm going to add one. 15 ounce can of crushed tomatoes and you can add whole tomatoes if you want to i have to see i may even add that kate is not a big tomato fan and threw these over here for a little housekeeping i'm going to add one this is a 20 ounce at 29 ounce can of tomato sauce and you know what i always say get all the goodness out Get all that goodness out. And I'm going to stir this up. And I'm going to just leave this alone. Just leave this alone. And I'm going to just let this simmer for about 30 minutes. Just so all that, and you tell you something, you know. Now, let's improvise. Let's talk about improvising. Now, for those of you that don't want to go through all of this, I understand, okay? So, Auntie is going to tell you how, what you can do. You can get you two jars of any marinara traditional pasta sauce, okay? Or you can get the one that says uh, with basil and whatever in it. You get any kind of pasta sauce, but that jar of pasta sauce is very bland, not much flavor to it. So, I'm going to tell you what you do. You get your two jars of any pasta sauce that you want, except that three cheese and the one with meat in it. Don't get them two, okay? Leave them alone. Leave them on the shelf. Get your two jars of that and add you a tablespoon of basil and a tablespoon of oregano. And you do the same process. You put it in your meat mixture and you let that simmer for 30, 30 minutes just like I am. Let's get, let this simmer on. Put your setting on low. I have this on number two, and I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to cover it and let it just simmer for about 30 minutes and put that in the can. And so it can, and I'm going to leave this alone. I had to get my lid. So I have this on number two. And let her be, let her be. That's it. So that's what I'm telling you. Just let, let it. Oh, you know what? Y'all supposed to be my sous chefs, Okay. Put a little fresh ground pepper in here. I like fresh ground paper, fresh peppercorn. Put a little, little sea salt. Not much because this pasta sauce is not. These tomatoes and stuff was not salt free. Okay. Stir that up around a little bit. And you know, pasta sauce can be frozen as well. If you, Cause I'm not gonna use all this, so the rest of it will go in the freezer. Cause it's that and the rest of that ricotta ricotta mix is going to be used for another dish I will be making soon. Come on here, get on here, stop being difficult. Yeah, I talk to things, y'all. Now if the things start ask uh, responding back, I'm running out the door. Okay, so I see you, lovelies, in a minute. Okay. Our sauce is all done, and doesn't it look scrumptious? Let me get a spoon. I don't need a slotted spoon because we need all that goodness. See, our sauce is all done. It smells so good. Okay, I'm going to put my sauce over here and bring the spaghetti squash so we can gather it together. Okay, I got it down. I brought the camera down so you can see. The only thing you're going to do is just take your fork 
and just rake this out. That's why they call it spaghetti squash. See, that's what it looks like. And I'm going to go all around my spaghetti squash. And I'm going to completely scrape this out. I love spaghetti squash. I eat this instead of pasta pastas. Uh, not because I watch my carbs. It's easy. This is good. This is a, uh, good for uh, me because of my diabetes. But also because I can digest this. Pasta is hard for me to digest. Even though I was a great lover of pasta. I am not going to lie. And if this wasn't so hot, I would I could just pick it up. And just scoopity doop doop. I want to make sure I get all my goodness out. I don't want to tear the uh, shell. We don't want to tear our shell. So as it gets down to the nitty gritty, you you have to be gentle. Okay, now I'm gonna swap these around. Hot to trot, hot to trot, woohoo! And this does make a lot. And believe it or not, these can these are enough. For, it's enough serving for four people. It is enough for four people. But some people say it's just enough for two people, but it to me it's enough for four people. You have to be careful so you don't break your shell. And as you see, um, the reason why I keep turning, because it is hot, and I'm going to make sure I get all my goodness out. It's okay if you have a little bit left in the shell. It's okay. It is okay. You don't have to be perfect, Patty. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is move these over here and um, combine some of my sauce with this. Okay, as you see, I have that spaghetti squash. And so what I'm going to do is take some of this pasta sauce. And I'm going to spoon it over here, put it in here. You can add as much pasta sauce as you would like, much meat sauce as, as you would like. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to stir this up. And I see, according to our taste, if I like it. And if I want to add a little more, I can. I can add a little more if I want to. And this is good enough. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm not going to send my pasta sauce away. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's just get our ricotta ricotta cheese out. Now the cheese I will be using will be the provolone mozzarella blend. So I'm going to bring my shells back over. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little pasta sauce and put it in the bottom. I'm going to take just a little bit of ricotta mixture. Just a little bit. Now, you can omit the ricotta mixture if you don't like ricotta or ricotta, whatever you want to call it. You don't like ricotta cheese, ricotta cheese. You don't have to use it. You 
you don't have to use it. You just pile that on. Cotta cheese in between that. Try not to because I don't want my spoon to touch. Because I'm not going to put, once I get this done, I'm not going to put my spoon back in there. I'm just going to spread this out a little bit. Throw that over there for a little housekeeping. And I'm going to put some cheese between here. And I'm going to put the rest of my spaghetti squash mixture on top. I'm going to smooth that out. Get all the goodness out. I don't need no goodness. A little housekeeping. Smooth these out. See, like I said, I have all this uh, left. Make this, make my top layer super cheesy. Ooh. Make my top layer super cheesy. Cheesy licious. Because you want your top layer, your top layer on lasagna is always super cheesy. It's always super cheesy. You want good coverage. Okay, I'm gonna pop these into the oven at three. These are gonna bake at 350 for about uh, 30 minutes, and I bet. That's what I mean. I say, you know, you can freeze. I'm gonna be freezing. My ricotta mix mixture, cause I'm not gonna, I didn't need all that. So that's all I'm gonna do. You can freeze this. I'm gonna pile this into two different bags. And I'm gonna date them. That's it. So this is, now I've done my meat sauce. So those are in the oven baking. So when you're freezing them, if you got a cutting board, all you gotta do is freeze them flat. They store easy. So I've got my meat sauce here. And I, I, I use food labels. That's why, because they're super, super duper sticky. And I just freeze them flat, label them. This is made with ground turkey. So, you know, that's... So, and I just freeze them flat. They go into the freezer. They'll be frozen in no time. So, that's it. All right, guys. Look at there. You, you can go with the toasty, toasty. Or you can go with lightly toasty brown. Okay, let's dig into one of these. It's so hot. You got that melted goodness in here. Oh, look at that cheese pull. Oh goodness. This is my this is going into my mouth. So I can wrap my cheese. Give it a good blow. Mm, that is so good. Mm. This is a one of these is enough for two, two people, maybe three. For me, it's one, two, three. 
It'll be enough for three, three meals for me. Caitlin probably too, because she's not a big eater either. But um, this is a great meal. It's easy. It's quick. It also can be frozen if you wrap it in saran wrap. Do at least four wraps. Put it in a freezer bag, okay? Put it in the freezer bag first. Then you wrap it three to four layers. And this is a great meal. And add your green vegetable because uh, add your green veggies. There's not enough peppers in here to count as a veggie. Add your salad or green beans or broccoli, some Brussels sprouts. Add your green veggie now. Thanks for hanging out with Auntie in Auntie Nell's Kitchen. I appreciate all your love and support. And you know, I always say, go be you, but do what? Be great being you. When life gives you lemons, you do make lemonade. Auntie's been making a lot of lemonade. At least trying to make lemonade, okay? Hearts, tight hugs, and kisses to each of you. I will see you later. Love you guys. Bye.